Hello and good morning. So for today's video, I wanted to share a message, not just for brand new homeschoolers, but for really, really anyone. But in my mind, I had brand new homeschoolers in mind, kind of the things I wish I had known when I started a homeschool. I started homeschooling in 2015. So my oldest was about four years old and now he's almost 10. I have a seven year old daughter and two little boys that are four and two. I remember when I first started homeschooling, um, I, it was very overwhelming. I would look online, I got caught up in like, what is my homeschool room going to look like? What curriculum am I, am I going to use? And just doing random searches, talking to anybody I could and getting different ideas and just trying to piece it all together. And <laughs> I was also thinking that I needed to be, I had this schedule, I had to have this perfect schedule. If my homeschool was gonna work out, I was gonna have the perfect schedule to just make it all work. You know, I'm this box checker. I just wanted to check all those boxes and make sure I was going to do this correctly. If I were to go back to my beginnings of everything that I've learned up until now, I think things would look a little different at the beginning stages. And I kind of want to help those in those beginning stages with the things that I've learned through these years. And, and I think it's okay to learn year by year, like things adjust, we're learning and we just move forward with each new idea and each, and each stage of life. I knew I was going to do this video. So I asked my kids because I think they're brilliant and sometimes they have the best answers. <laughs> Uh, I asked them, what do you think is most important about home to school? And my oldest said, I think it's being home. He says, I love being home. I was like, all right, all right, okay. And then my daughter, she says, I just want to be with you, mom. <laughs> Which of course made me so good and melted my little heart. My four-year-old Hudson, he said, he, I don't think he said anything. I think he just kind of huffed off. <laughs> and then my two-year-old, he said, um, he said, I, I like going, what do you say? The ducky place, no, not complete sentences. He said the ducky place and the farm place. <laughs> so he really likes our little outings that we do. There was a day that we spent like 20 minutes looking at the ducks because the mom and the babies got separated. There was a little waterfall in the stream and the mom was at the top of the waterfall. It was it was little. And then the babies, there's two babies that got stuck at the bottom and we were just very distraught and I couldn't leave without knowing that they were gonna be back together. And the little babies were climbing up the rocks and then tumbling down and I almost climbed the fence to help them out but then they got further into the water. And then finally the mama, babe, uh, the mama she uh, walked down the rocks of the waterfall and all the little babies followed and they caught up with the other two and we were very happy and so I think I think they really enjoyed enjoyed that little moment with the ducks so with that I think they hit it right on the nail is the first most important essential of homeschool I believe is the parent-child relationship to have that love and connection and day to day this looks like being 100% present 100 like when i'm doing a school lesson i put away the phones and not the distractions and i i am not perfect at this but i'm trying really hard to be better in being 100 there in my mind so that i'm not getting distracted with oh um this needs to be cleaned up or this um or a project i'm working on i am 100 present in what they need and we sit down and do a lesson. Being all in on the day to day. You know, enjoy having them by my side and not pushing them away and getting overwhelmed or saying like, I, I've got things to do, go, go do that and I'll, I'll work on this. Enjoy having them by my side in not only schoolwork, but the day to day chores, you know, the cleaning, the laundry, the, um, all of the little daily activities that we do just having them right there by my side engaged and having conversations as we're doing activities try really hard to get outside especially with my two little boys they're they're 
big movers, and I think it's really important for boys especially, is to get out and move. So we go on walks, go to the playground, we ride bikes, getting outside in the backyard, little things where they're just getting outside, digging in the dirt, playing in the sand. And then there's the big things that we do to create good memories with each other. Big fun outings, the uh, camping trips, hiking, family vacations, exploring museums, just getting out and exploring and doing fun events and things like that. Also, that love and connection comes in going through the hard things, like when we're going through our moves and leaving what we know behind and going towards something new and just all the emotions that come up with all of the hard things that we go through in you know, talking and comforting and somebody loses their temper and just that forgiveness and um, apologizing and coming together, even on the hard, the hard things day to day. I think that's where they, we can have that love and connection for sure. Having a place where they feel safe, a place where they can talk and listen, and I just wanna be this safe place for them. The one-on-one -on -one interaction I think is really important. I try to, you know, at night, maybe when they're going down to bed, have some one-on-one -on -one talk with them or do an activity that they like to do. The kids really like when I get down and play Legos with them and really just giving them attention. They really love when I just get down on their level and give them the attention that they need. Not just me, my husband too. Like we work together in giving them the attention that they need and when, and it just, you know, we call it filling their love buckets. And I think a lie that has been put into our society over the years is that children do not need their parents and that they need lots of friends. They need to be around their peers and be social. And that is the biggest lie. Because if you look back on your childhood or as a, um, you know, or a parent looking back on raising their children, they're not gonna think, oh, I wish I had spent more time with friends. I wish I had made more friends. Like nobody, <laughs> nobody thinks that. Uh, like everyone wants to look back and be like, I wish I had spent more time with my family. Um, so we try to instill the importance of family. And friends are fun, friends are good, but it is not the majority of our time um, and efforts is being social and um, we really instill the family bond. My tip number two is to light the fire. What I mean by that is that we're not filling their minds with information that they can just regurgitate. And I choose that word um, purposefully, regurgitate, is they're taking new information and just being able to repeat it like in a test or something and not really analyzing it or comprehending it. Like they're just, you know, it goes in here and goes out there. Like they're, it's not in their heart, it's not in their mind, it's just information. That is not what learning is at all. So what I mean by light the fire is to create an environment where they have that spark to that, that love of learning. Like learning is not between the hours of 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. This is our learning time and then we're done for the day. Like that is not how learning happens. It is lifelong, it is day long. It is just a part of every day. We make mistakes, we learn, we grow. It is constant. We try new things and we explore new things and curiosity. Um, this is what makes it fun and enlightening. That is, that is what we're going for. For example, my son, he read a book about Abraham Lincoln from the Good and the Beautiful Library. And he told me, <laughs> he told me, mom, I want to be like Abraham Lincoln. He reads so much that he has a memorized and, and I want to do that. And I'm just like, wow, okay. So we started this goal to read all the books in our house. And so for me, I'm like, all right, well, I need to start adding books to our library <laughs> and then creating a, our home library a little bit larger with classics and good books. So I'm working on that. So I didn't give him a checklist like, okay, well, you need to do this and this and read this book and do this. No, he's inspired by this person of good character and a person who loved to learn. A quote that I just love, and I'll pr probably repeat it a lot here on my channel is what you gaze upon is what you become. With that quote, we have been working really hard this year being more intentional in the media in our home, our books, our movies, our shows, and 
magazines, whatever. Like we're just really, very really intentional about the things that we bring into our home. And it's, I've been seeing a huge difference and I will get make another video on that. A great resource that has helped me see clearly the vision of teaching the heart is The Well-Educated Heart. Look it up. She has a great resource of books and it's in quotes and art and poetry. And these are the things that teach the heart. There is a quote that she says in there that I love that I'll share. I'm going to read it real quick. In the earth's economy, the richest person is the one with the most money. But in heaven's economy, the richest person is the one with the greatest capacity for light. I love, I love that quote. There's another one that I saw on her site that I love by William Channing. In the best books, great men talk to us, give us their most precious thoughts, and pour their souls into ours. Like, I love that because I think of the idea of our souls just teaching each other and lifting each other. And if we're learning ourselves and we set that example, then that also helps to instill. Like, I love to read, I love to learn, and so my kids love to read and they love to learn. Uh, for example, I read a book that was one of the kids' chapter books we got from the library, and it was about Thomas Hopkins, what's his name, um, Gallaudet, and he started the first school in America for the deaf, and teaching American Sign Language. Uh, and it was very inspiring. It was just a short little book, and I was reading it, and I said, man, that guy has gone through some really hard things. And Cooper was right there, my son, he was on the floor, playing and he's like yeah I read that book and I you know I think it's because he had to help the deaf people go through their hard things and he was in that moment you know it's telling me well he's learning that we go through hard things so that we can help others go through hard things and so it's just these stories of inspiration and other people's stories really just light that fire. Like stories, art, poetry, nature, all of those things teach to the soul, the heart. And that's what we're trying to touch because that's what's going to set them up for a lifelong success of learning. Also just the excitement, like I'm excited to teach, they're excited to learn. And there's some things I get really excited about, and then there's some, some things that I'm not so excited about, but I'm, um, like math is a really tough one for us, but um, we're working on that. Along with all of this, I'm learning how to become a better teacher. I'm growing a lot, and they're growing a lot, and we're growing together. <laughs> and tip number three is instilling good habits. When, especially when they're little, this is the best time to instill those good habits because um, it will set them up for success. We are not a lounge around in our PJs kind of family. When we get done with breakfast, I'm clapping my hands, snapping my fingers, getting them motivated to get up and get moving and get their chores done, get dressed so we can get our, you know, go on to the next thing and next thing and just get their day moving. And when they, when they do the morning things by themselves without me asking, I praise them like crazy, like great job on your bed. It's all made and pretty. Look at your room. It's beautiful. Look at those teeth. They're nice and shiny. Like, I am overly praising them like crazy so that they would feel really excited about taking care of their body, washing their hands, going to the bathroom, eating healthy, um, all of those things. Because if we're taking care of our body and then we're taking care of our soul, then our mind can work and function and we can um, go on to the next things. I like getting them outside and exercising and I think there's so many people who struggle with just those good habits. I don't want them, I don't want my children to struggle with instilling good habits. I want those to be really good for them at the start. And then once they are done with their morning chores and we're getting into our scripture study and our prayer, because um, I really think taking care of the body, taking care of the soul, taking care of the mind. I have this long-term vision of if I'm doing all this hard work now when they're little with the habits and and the learning and the relationship, then when they get to be in their teenage years, it doesn't have to be 
hard and I mean I'm sure it'll be hard in in different ways but it doesn't have to be like those rebellious those typical rebellious teenagers it can be glorious and fun if we have that strong bond when they're and that trust that when they're going through hard things they can come to me and we can talk about those things and work through them and just habits will be there and the love of learning so they can be independent and thriving and with that independence they will choose friends that with the help of each other, they will rise higher. Homeschool is not a box to be checked. Um, it is a way of life. And it is fun, it's beautiful, and it is full of light and goodness. And with these three tips and the guidance of the Lord, everything else just follows. The curriculum, the space in your home where you're gonna homeschool, the routine, what works for your family will come into your heart, people will come into your life, um, materials and things will come into your life you like you will be led to the things that will work for you and I highly highly recommend checking out uh, the well-educated heart the good and the beautiful those are great resources even if you just use them for the book list I love finding good books through these lists because you really do have to do a lot of digging <laughs> to find to find the good books all right so that is what I wish I would have known when I was starting out and I'm just learning that and so we are kind of adjusting our homeschool to be really focused on teaching to the heart but also the mind. I love these resources that inspire me and I really hope that this these tips are going to help you on your journey and please comment and share your thoughts and questions and anything with me. I would love to hear them. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.